Don't fall away, stay all the way. We're talking about the best of times and the worst of times, the expansions and contractions of a new birth, the ups and downs of God shaking, and a wave of revival breaking over the receding wave of the falling away of the people that are already there. Amen. Let's pray. Father, as we open your word and begin to look at this today, we're asking that you would give us your spirit of wisdom and revelation. And I pray for every listener, every participant today, Father, that you would give them understanding, revelation and insight that can help them over these next couple of years and on into the future in Jesus' name. Amen. We're talking about how to avoid deception amid the sorrows. Two, see that you're not troubled. Matthew 24, 6 says, And you will hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Leave it alone. Let God do what he's doing. Yes, pray for safety. Yes, listen to and do what he says. Yes, pray and stand against the works of darkness. But let's not get over anxious about what's happening. Amen. Don't be troubled about it. These things must come to pass. Matthew 24 verse 7 says, For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, pestilences, that could be pests or it could be diseases, and earthquakes in various places. These are the beginning of sorrows. Amen. We're going to get through this. So number one was see that you're not deceived. Number two, see that you're not troubled. Number three today, how do you avoid deception during the sorrows? Number three, see that you don't grow cold and fall away. Very, very important. In verses 9 and 10, Jesus says this, and then they will deliver you up to tribulation. That to me speaks of persecution. They, implying those that are following the Antichrist spirit, they will deliver you up to tribulation, kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. It doesn't speak of an easy time, but that doesn't stop us being joyful. Amen. What do we do when we're persecuted? Rejoice. Pray for the persecutors. What about those that try to kill you? Well, I know this sounds weird, but Jesus said, turn the other cheek. I've had people trying to kill me, but I stood on the word of God. I rebuked the devil and I survived. Praise the Lord. And I'm sure all of us can be protected in these times. But if you're destined to be a martyr, once you get to heaven, you'll be very glad that you were because the crown of martyrdom will be eternal, even though the pain of the physical death will be very short lived. Amen. Verse 10. And then many will be offended. Listen to this. Persecution, pressure, the tightening contractions of this birth period and the down part of the shaking contracting on you. And many will be offended because of the persecution, the affliction, the pressure, the pressures, the cares of this life. Many will be offended and betray one another and will hate one another. We can't fall for this. We can't get into this thing of letting our love grow cold, hating, betraying. It's going to be shocking. But we must keep our love running hot. Let's go down to verse 11. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, and we're starting to see that on our streets now, there's lawlessness out there. People are running around all over the place, carrying on and doing things that are not lawful and no one's stopping them. In other words, lawlessness is abounding. The love of many will grow cold. This is an astounding statement. The love of many will grow cold. This is dangerous. This is a warning. Yes, with persecution and many hating one another, betraying one another, it's not going to be easy to keep loving. We probably have to spend a lot of time forgiving you. I forgive him. I pray for him. You know, this is not going to be easy, but we've got to overcome the temptation to fall away and stay strong because Jesus said, he who endures to the end shall be saved. You've got to endure this. In other words, there's something to endure, but with God's help, 
with the Holy Spirit in your life, with your eyes on Jesus, going to the throne of grace, being empowered, you can do this. Because remember, there's no temptation that will come against you, but that which is common to man and God with the temptation will also provide a way of escaping it. You can endure. You can overcome and keep your love burning white hot. Amen. I just want to keep reminding you that the new era won't come and the old era won't be gone until this thing gets birthed and the birth pains are going to be stronger and closer together and the contractions are going to get very intense. Amen. But the glory of God is increasing in the church at the same time. Woohoo! So, how do you avoid deception during the sorrows? See that you're not deceived. See that you're not troubled and see that you don't grow cold and fall away. Number four, see that you're not distracted. This is crucially important. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to read from verse 19. Do not treasure up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and rust ruin them and where thieves break in and steal them. But treasure up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust ruin them, and where thieves do not break in or steal them. Jesus is telling this because he loves us, and he wants to keep us out of harm's way, and to keep us out of trouble, and help us to endure to the end. The only way this is going to happen is if our eye is single focused on God, focused on him, seeking first his kingdom, and going through it by enduring and not getting distracted or sucked into the world system. Verse 21, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, if your eye is healthy, single focused, your whole body will be fully illuminated. We need that illumination. It's revelation from God that can help us every day, every step of the way. Verse 23, but if your eye is deceived or bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is completely dark, how great is that darkness? Verse 24, it's the next verse, it's in the next breath. It's not a big picnic in between or a new session. It's continuing. No one can serve as a slave to two masters. For either he will hate one and love the other, or he'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve as a slave to both God and mammon. So you've got the world system controlled by the God of this world, people blinded, struggling, trying to depend on the socialist system and the world's way. And over here you've got the glorious church full of light, full of revelation, full of provision, full of these promises that say the wealth of the wicked is going to come to the just. There's going to be provision because this is God's economy and that's the world's economy, which is always subject to inflation, interest rates, trouble. There's never enough to go around. They run up debt, everything crashes, the stock market goes up and down. But over here, it's just awesome. It's good. Yes, there's tests and trials. Yes, you've got to birth things and stand on the word of God. But God's provision is always good. He provided for 40 years in the wilderness, every day, water and food, manna when they needed it, quails when they needed it. And that was people he was angry with. They were under judgment, but God still provided for them. How much more will he provide for you? Amen. So we've got to remember to keep our eyes on Jesus and not to get distracted into the world system. Speaking of keeping our eyes on is exactly what he's speaking of because he says, if your eyes healthy or single focused on God, you'll get the revelation you need. You'll be fully illuminated. But if your eyes on the world system and you've got your security in your job, in the stock market, in who owes you money or gambling, if that's where your security is, you're going to be subject to shaking. You're going to be subject to all kinds of things and not get the revelation you need. And then backing through this scripture, he says the way to make sure you keep your eyes on heaven 
is to put your treasure there. <laughs> it's simple. Amen. You've got your treasure in the bank and then the bank burns down or the bank rattles. And what if the bank crashes? You'll be having your eyes on that every day, seeing what's happening with your money. Like in Victoria, years ago, people used to have their money in the pyramid. Amen. It's like going back to Egypt, isn't it? They had their money in the pyramid. The pyramid crashed. People lost their money for a long time and eventually got back so many cents on the dollar. But if you put your treasure in heaven, you can keep your focus in heaven, staying focused on Jesus, the word of God, walking in the spirit, being a worshiper in spirit and truth, living by faith. You can do all these things without any trouble at all because that's where your heart will be. Where your treasure is, your heart will be. Where your heart is, your eyes will go. Your spiritual eyes will be focused there and you'll get all the revelation you need to keep you safe in this time. Amen. And Jesus went on to talk about distraction. Now, as we read about this, think about what the word distraction is made from. Dis, then it's got track in the middle. Ted, there's a track that we're called to walk on. Jesus said, I am the way. He also said, enter through the narrow gate, for straight is the gate, constricted is the way that leads to life, and few are going the right way. Being distracted is getting your eyes off Jesus. Remember, Peter only sank when he took his eyes off Jesus. Being distracted is being taken off the track, off the track that leads to life. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many are going in that way, and at the end of that track is eternity in hell. We've got to make sure we're not being distracted, put off our track, the track of following Jesus. Let's read what it says. In Matthew 6, 25, reading through the chapter, Jesus said, Therefore I say to you, don't be distracted by thoughts about your life, what you will eat and drink, nor about your body. Remember, it's in the context of you can't serve mammon and God. What he's describing in this verse is serving mammon. Don't be distracted by thoughts about your life, what you'll eat and drink, nor about your body, what you'll put on. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? Observe the birds of the air. I don't have time to go into this today, but I'm sure birds of the air doesn't refer to chooks, ostriches and emus. He's talking about birds whose refuge and escape from danger is to go into the air, which is a picture of the spirit realm. They are only in danger when they contact the earth and come down here to collect their food. They're going to the world we are in the world, but we're not of it. But like the birds, we have to contact that system to get our provision. That's when we're in danger of being distracted. Amen. And our refuge is back into the spirit, back into prayer, back into the word of God, and then we can be safe. He says of the birds, they don't sow and reap, nor do they gather into barns, yet your heavenly father feeds them. Now, when he says sow and reap, he means they don't have farms where they've got to plough the ground themselves and the Father feeds them. I see the birds on the grass out here every morning. They just hop around, tweet, and do what they do. There's always something for them to eat. There's plenty for them to eat. They are happy, healthy birds all singing away out there. God feeds them. Aren't you more valuable than they are? And I know God feeds them, but man, there are times when they have to fly away in fright. They just go flat out, making noises, some of them, as they go. Verse 27. Which of you, by anxious thought, can add 18 inches to his stature? And why be distracted over thoughts for your clothing? See, we're looking at this point. Don't be distracted by thoughts about your life, about clothing, about your provision. It's all worry, and it leads to dropping faith in God. Don't be put off the track of following Jesus through this stuff. Don't be distracted over thoughts for your clothing. Consider closely the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't toil or weave. And yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like even one of these. Therefore, if this is the way God clothes the grass of the field, which today is here and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more multiply clothes to you? O oh, you of little faith. Verse 31, so don't be anxious saying, 
What do we eat? What do we drink? What will we wear? For the Gentiles, who are serving mammon, seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Walk in the spirit. Live by faith. Be a worshiper in spirit and in truth. Abide in the secret place. Stay in the vine. Live by faith. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Listen. Listen to the king. That's how you seek his kingdom. You listen to the king. You do what he says. And all these things will be added to you. Therefore, again, he's going to use the word, do not be distracted by anxious thoughts about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Sufficient to each day is its own evil. Yes, we may not know exactly how the end time is going to unfold. Are we going out in the beginning, the middle or the end? Are we going out at all? Are we going straight into the millennium? It doesn't matter. Sufficient for today is what we have to overcome today. And then as it unfolds, God will reveal to us what we need to know. And if we're going out at the beginning, woohoo, praise the Lord. Seven years of the marriage supper of the Lamb. If we go out in the middle, a bit more tests and trials, out we go, three and a half years of the marriage supper of the Lamb. If we go out at the end, whoo, we just get a snack and come back. <laughs> Amen. I, I don't know how it's going to come out, but I do know what Jesus is saying here. Do not be distracted by anxious thoughts about tomorrow. There's enough evil for today, casting all of our cares upon him. So keeping our love running hot, getting rid of all the cares, forgiving when we have to forgive, turning the other cheek, going the extra mile. It's going to keep us busy. Amen. We've got to be ready to go when he comes, whenever that is. Jesus said he doesn't even know the day and the hour. We've just got to keep doing what we're called to do. Amen. So don't let worry distract you. Don't let it get you off Jesus' track onto Satan's track. You can't serve two masters. They're diverging tracks. You can't sit on the fence. The fence is Satan's territory. You can't sit on the fence with an ear to the ground on both sides. You can't try to put one foot on each camp because the tracks are diverging and you'll end up split in half. It just can't work. Amen. So how do we avoid deceptions doing all these sorrows? Number one, see that you're not deceived. Two, see that you're not troubled. Three, see that you don't grow cold and fall away. Four, see that you're not distracted. And number five, see that you contribute to Jesus' great commission. This is so, so crucially important. This part here is the upside of shaking, the expansion of giving birth. It's the best of times and it's the waves of revival, not all the down parts. Amen. Matthew 24, verse 14, Jesus said this, This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, all ethnic groups, and then the end will come. So as the receding wave of falling away is drifting away, there will be people deceived by the false Christ, false apostles, false teachers, and false prophets, there will be people whose love grows cold. There will be people who are scared off by persecution. There will be people who are offended, hating others, betraying others. In other words, this is going to be very hurtful for those that remain. It's not going to be easy to lose friends, especially when they hit you with parting shots about how evil you are or how bad you are, full of accusations. They've gone off onto Satan's track. We've got to stay on God's track. But at the same time, there's going to be a glorious wave of revival breaking in over the top of it. Then the end will come. And what we need to do in this time is to be part of what God is doing and Jesus is doing with his gospel. Amen. His great commission is to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I want to encourage you, be part of a soul winning team. We're not all evangelists, but we all have some gifts. It's impossible to get into this world without a gift from God. So if we're part of a team, the evangelists can help us win our friends and family to Christ, but we can help them. Some of us are cleaners in the church. Some are people working in the kitchen. Some are on the AV team. Some are singers and musicians. Some are in supporting roles and helping in building structures. 
We've all got different roles to play. Some people are great at greeting at the door. Some people are just love praying. Some love worshiping. We're all different. But if we pull our resources, we combine our talents and we get behind Jesus' vision to see the whole earth evangelized and every ethnic group getting the gospel, we can do our part, the part that our team has to do. We can pray for one another. We can pray for our friends and family to get saved. See those sons coming from afar, the daughters nursed at our side. See the wealth of the Gentiles coming in and kings coming to the brightness of your rising. Amen. Arise, shine, for the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. This is a time of great revival, great in gathering. It's going to be the best of times and the worst of times, but let's not get distracted with the worries and the cares. Let's just believe God that he can provide for us. He looked after Elijah when he sent a drought to judge his people. Amen. He looked after Isaac. He looked after Joseph, his brothers and all their family. He looked after all of Egypt and Pharaoh. God can use you to help provide for others, but he can use you in your gift. Let's pull together, pull our resources, putting our finances into God's kingdom. Let's combine our talents and gifts and form an unstoppable team of people. We who are living, say, here in Australia, I'm in country Victoria at the moment, we can still give to missions and help missions overseas. They're praying for us. We're helping each other. We are a gospel soul winning team that's helping each other win our friends and family to Christ. We are fulfilling the Great Commission as a team. You know, if I took on personally the responsibility to preach a gospel to everybody worldwide, I simply couldn't do it. But if I get committed to a team and I love those that are in it and I get used to forgiving, turning the other cheek, going the extra mile, keeping my love running hot, even if it's not everywhere, praying for those that are around me, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. We can keep our eyes on Jesus, walk in the Spirit, live by faith, be worshippers in spirit and in truth, abide in the secret place, stay in the Word of God and know the truth. We can be set free, stay running hot, and even though we go through many tests and trials and persecutions or whatever, we can overcome in Jesus' name while we're in this team and see this great wave of revival breaking in and many people being saved. Well, God bless you today. Thank you so much for listening. And if you haven't given your life to Jesus, I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now to give your life to Jesus so that you can be fully in his kingdom. It starts with this prayer being born again, as Jesus called it, where the Bible says you're shifted out of the devil's kingdom, put into God's kingdom, and then you can seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and have all these things added to you. It begins by calling on the name of the Lord because the Bible says, all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you don't remember anything, just say, Jesus, please help me. But the Bible does show us exactly how to call on him. And that's found in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, we will be saved. So say this prayer after me, which will cover all of these bases in Jesus' name. Amen. Repeat this. Say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for carrying my sin. I believe you rose from the dead, having paid for it all. I turn from my old life. I put off that old nature. I receive your new birth. I put on your new nature. I confess you are my Lord, that I'm born again that I've been shifted out of the devil's kingdom into God's kingdom and my name's in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Well, if you said that prayer and really meant it, you said it to God, meant it, today I believe you're born again. And if you keep your eyes on Jesus, tell someone that you trust that you're a born again Christian, read your Bible, pray and find other believers that you can have fellowship with and form a team 
for soul winning and being a witness for Jesus, you're going to make it. Amen. That's what I believe. You're born again. So thank you so much for listening today. And for everybody else, I just pray that you will really take to heart what's been talked about so that you can be born again to walk in the fullness of God and stay in God's kingdom, enjoying the best of times, despite the worst of times coming up as God shakes everything in the world to shake off the devil's world system and leave the way open for the birth of the millennial reign of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thanks a lot for listening. I'll see you in the next message.